So, looks like we have a new girl in town. Uh, Miss Shannon Q has posted what looks to be her first official YouTube video ever. And yes, it's slightly dumbfounding because she, I guess, pretty well known in the atheist community because she already has a thousand subscribers with her first video and how she did that, I'm not really sure because I have something like 700 videos and maybe eight subscribers or something, <laughs> some ridiculous. I don't even know, I lost, ca I lost count at like nine or seven. I have no idea. But anyways, as far as as far as a new member of the YouTube community, I foresee this woman going very, very, very far as a YouTube commentator. Uh, very far indeed. Outside of the obvious that she is lovely to look at and quite intelligent, it would seem, uh, there's something very, I don't know if compelling is the right word, there's something very calming about watching her, compelling in a way that makes you feel calmer. Um, as hard as that is to explain, you kind of feel like she has a very soothing presence when you're watching her and you kind of feel like, oh, phew, I get to finally shut out the world and, you know, watch my video. <laughs> you feel kind of, I don't know, I, I won't say it feels like she's ministering to you, but it's just you feel kind of relaxed, like, okay, good, phew, I finally get to watch Shannon. I don't know, it's, I, it seemed to come from her. It's just something I experienced, so make of that what you will. But more importantly, her agenda when it comes to YouTube, uh, in her words, I believe her exact words, to provoke, promote more effective dialogues between atheists and Christians. Now, I applaud that 100%, and I am 150% on board with that agenda. I think that is absolutely what is necessary right now and that is the right thing to do. So I am 150% in her camp in doing that and I support that wholeheartedly. No, no equivocations, no reservations whatsoever. Matter of fact, I think that's necessary and she seems to be sincere in her attempt and that seems to be sincerely what she is about, trying to, you know, negotiate the conversation so that we have more effective lines of communication between me, the Christian, and you, the atheist. That is 100% necessary. And just to put my own two cents in uh, as to why these communications are so thorny and complicated, which I believe she calls them complex conversations. In my own experience, I find that people have trigger points. Both as in, we have trigger points both as individuals and in the culture at large, there are trigger points, things that are really, really, really loaded to talk about. And the culture at large is pretty obvious, race, forget it, you know, things you just, once you start talking about it, it starts getting really, really, really heated and seems to automatically lead to angsty type of emotionally intense conversations. Now, in you, the individual, there are trigger points. And oftentimes what makes these co complex conversations so hard to maneuver is that you can inadvertently run afoul of the trigger points in the individuals that you're talking to without even knowing about it, particularly when it comes to something like religion, particularly if you're talking from the point of view as I, I am the Christian and you are the atheist. Because I find with atheists, often, and not all of them, because not all of them were raised Christian, but there's a particular type of atheist and it's fairly common. I mean, I would say 70% of the atheists I interact with on Twitter were raised fundamentalist Christian. And it's really, really easy to push emotional hot buttons in them without even trying. Because they are, um, they are ready to rumble at just, the wor at just a few, few key words. It's like keystrokes on a computer. You know, you start talking about like hell and they're like, ah, don't, 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 don't get me started on hell. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and they start freaking out. Now, I'm oversimplifying the thing just to make it, just to communicate more effectively. Yes, I'm overgeneralizing a lot. But, why these things exist? Trigger points in the individual are, they are deep-seated psychological leanings, realities. They are deep-seated psychological impulses. They were put in us usually from the outside. 
oftentimes we go through life unaware that they're there. Now, a healthy adult, a healthy 30-year-old, for example, will start trying to go through their stuff and, and figure themselves out and try to find their, locate their trigger points and have some understanding of where they are and how they, how they operate. But there are far more individuals in this world, um, and I've moved from atheists, I'm just talking in general. There are far more individuals in this world who go through life completely oblivious to their trigger points, kind of on purpose. They don't want to see them. They don't want to go through their stuff. They don't want to look at their stuff. Actually, I can put my wife in the camp. <laughs> Sorry, honey. <laughs> Sorry, sweetheart. Yeah, good. Yeah, good, sweetheart. Yep, yep. Oh, yes, I could. Of someone who just doesn't want to dig too deeply into their own personal angst because they're afraid of what they're going to find there. And that leads to a trigger point. And it leads to what she refers to as complex conversations. Now, I'm just talking in general about what, why I, my own two cents on complex conversations. So, for example, someone who was raised, an atheist who was raised, and oftentimes you find maybe 70% of the atheists I deal with on Twitter have been raised in fundamentalist Christian households. And they were raised in a form of religion that was, you know, kind of toxic, abusive, according to them, abusive, and I would say, yeah, abusive, okay, fine. Abusive, kind of toxic. So that it's easy for them to get triggered by certain, even certain phrases, maybe, that are common to Christians. You know, certain, certain types of things that Christians will say might even trigger responses in them. And oftentimes they aren't necessarily responding in real time. They are responding to... Um, there's, a, there's a whole backlog of things that they are responding to that may or may not be germane to what's happening in the present tense. Um, another thing that happens, and Christians do this too, I'm not trying to pin this on atheists, I'm just trying to examine complex conversations. I'm not trying to pin it on anybody. I'm just telling you why they're complex. Uh, for example, I've had people appear in my timeline and call me like, you know, Craig is the most... Craig is the most hardcore of the young earth creationists. <laughs> Where the hell did you get that from? <laughs> did you ever talk to me about it? No, you just, okay, so you just put that on me. And I'm sure Christians do that to atheists all the time. You know, this atheist, I, I guess there's a, there's a bunch of, I don't really know the, 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 atheist, uh, the atheist bugaboos or the atheist trigger points or the things that you say to atheists to get them all hot and bothered, but, you know, I, I have a clue as to some that they get irritated from hearing like, Atheism is a religion, too. It takes more faith to be an atheist than to be a Christian. I don't know. There's a whole bunch. Now, some of it is play. Some of it is us just sparring back and forth, trying to win points, you know, win friends and influence people and score points for our team. Um, score one for our side. And actually, in fact... Maybe that isn't harmless. Maybe that's also sometimes part of the point, is we aren't necessarily trying to converse or understand one another, but we are trying to win a point of view. And when you start from the premise that I need to convince or I need to win out in this exchange, the exchange all of a sudden becomes inauthentic, not necessarily organic to what's you don't really hear each other and you don't really listen to each other. You're just, you know, it's like an argument you get into with your wife. You start talking past each other, and you're just trying to win your point. And that's one of the things that happens. So, from my own two cents, I would say there are two, two factors that I've at least noticed in complex conversations. Trigger points that you inadvertently step on, and looking to win, looking to settle the issue. It's appropriate in some forms, but it doesn't actually necessarily lead to better understanding. Usually it leads to the obvious. You know, you're not, you don't really listen when it comes to something like that because you're just listening to hear what you can say so that you can answer back and make your own point. You're not really listening anymore. But regardless of that, uh, like I said, this is a welcome voice in the community and I applaud 150% approve of what her mission is when it comes to atheist Christian debates and atheist Christian interactions. And, you know, welcome to the party. Welcome to the party, Shannon. 
and hope we hope we hope we meet us someday. Bye bye.